And thank you very much, Oban. Thank you very much. And uh, first of all, let me say that it's an honor to be here in Romania and um, an honor to be here at this uh, uh, great conference on ICT and the internet, uh, future of the internet. Um, this is uh, an area that is uh, of great interest to the Swedish presidency, as well, of course, as uh, for the European Union as a whole. Um, as you know, we are getting close to the end of the Lisbon agenda and the end of the I-2010 program, uh, the aim of, of which was to make Europe uh, the leading information society in the world by the end of 2010. And uh, we may, all of course, ask ourselves if we are going to reach that uh, target or not. Um, and uh, that, I think, will be evaluated now uh, in the year to come. But I'm quite sure that uh, we have made great progress in some areas in the last 10 years while in other areas, of course, we could have done even more. Um, however, I think that when discussing the past 10 years and, of course, also the future uh, of information society, it's important to keep in mind that we are aiming at a moving target. Um, if we uh, go back some 10 years ago, I mean, information society was something uh, other than it is today. Um, in fact, if we look at the world today, uh, a kid uh, sitting by his laptop, and I can see this every day as I've got uh, smaller sons playing around with their computers, uh, they can get access to more information uh, on the internet in an hour or so than um, the founding father of, of a Swedish administration could get hold of uh, a few hundred years ago in, uh, during the course of his whole lifetime. In the same way, uh, a kid can today, over via Facebook and other social uh, um, communities, uh, get connected to more people around the world than any other people, uh, person in the world could get access to uh, just some 10 or 15, 20, 20 years ago. Uh, so I think we have to, when looking at the end users, uh, we have to have this in mind and when looking at forward. It's also worthwhile when talking about the end users and about the demands that are being placed on us to remember that the young people who went to vote or at least had the right to vote in the European elections this summer, uh, the first time voters, they belong to the first generation that do not know about a world without the internet. I mean, I think most of us in this room, including myself, are what we could refer to as digital immigrants, while they are digital natives. Uh, so this is a real challenge for the European Union and for the Swedish presidency to take on, to think about the post-I-2010 agenda. Uh, and from the, uh, from the side of the Swedish presidency, we are doing what we can to push this agenda. We are doing this both in the general I-2010 field, we're doing it in the e-health, field and we're doing it in the e-government field. And as regards the post-I-2010 agenda, um, the Commission has started a public consultation on, on the, kind of the, the aims and the visions for the post-I-2010 and the Swedish presidency earlier this year commissioned a report on the post-I-2010 agenda um, where we wanted to find out and get a report on the most important policy questions that the EU faces in the area of ICT and information society up until 2015. And this report was published uh, and, and uh, handed over to us this September. Um, and the title of this document that can be found on the Swedish press is Knowledge Society. Uh, it sets out in just about 40 pages and in 10 chapters these challenges that we are facing. And this report will be discussed at a high-level meeting um, on the island of Gotland, the city of Visby, uh, on the 9th to 10th November of this year. And the theme of this high-level meeting uh, is uh, the VSP agenda creating impact for an EU union by 2015. 
So we really look forward to the discussions and the outcome of, of that meeting. Another area then is e-health, which is also being uh, discussed at, the, at this global forum. Um, also here we have had discussions. We had a ministerial meeting in July where our Minister for Social Affairs pointed out the need to release e-health uh, from the pure technical perspective and put it more firmly on the agenda for health reform. And also here we uh, have, have uh, commissioned and received a report which is called e-health for, for a healthier Europe, uh, showing us the uh, astonishing rewards that can be made if we use information and information technology in a better way in, the, in our healthcare system. It's really astonishing the potential that we can see here. Um, and finally then in the area of e-government, which is the area where I work uh, mostly, we are also doing what we can to push the agenda. Uh, as we will at the ministerial meeting in Malmö in November, uh, put on the table a ministerial declaration setting out the visions for e-government up until 2015. And we can already hear and now see that there are three kind of political priority areas that will be in focus uh, at this meeting and this conference. First of all, we see that e-government can be used to empower the citizens and b uh, businesses of, of Europe. Um, secondly, we can see that e-government can support the single market, keeping in mind that in November there's only one more month to go before the implementation of the services directive. And thirdly, of course, e-government can still uh, be used to enable efficiency and effectiveness uh, within our governments. Uh, so to con conclude, uh, in the European Union, on, on the Swedish presidency side, we are doing what we can to push the I-2010 agenda, and we look forward really to uh, what's coming up here in the next year in this field. Thank you.